Hi folks, this is Expat Aviator and this is my tutorial for using V-strips with Euroscope. I'm currently controlling Heathrow Tower at the moment, director are online above me but there's no ground or delivery, so I may get interrupted. Speedbird 619 are requesting push back. Speedbird 619 are push and start approved, face north. Push and start facing north for Speedbird 619. So I may get interrupted just like that, and this guy, Speedbird619, let's just show you what we'll do with him. Sid Trigger, which we'll come back to in a moment, and uh, his push direction is north. So, uh, V-strips when you connect, um, and note that I'm not going to go into the installation of the plugin or V-strips itself because it's well documented elsewhere. Uh, once you connect to Euroscope, V-strips notices... Speedbird619, we just came for uh, which bank will eat a couple more minutes before we are ready for departure. Speedbird 619 and Roger, hold position, call me when ready. Welcome, Speedbird 619, thanks, sir. Okay, so V-strips will notice what you're connected as, it will notice who else is online and uh, what positions they're controlling, and it will give you an appropriate view um, of all of the different bays, which is what these are called, and the strips which are inside them. Um, I'm controlling tower with nobody below me so it's showing me the ADC bandbox view which lets me do everything I need to. Um, if ground were to come online I may change the, the view but we'll come back to that in a little while. So each aircraft is represented by um, one of these strips uh, just like they are in the Euroscope lists however a V strips improves upon the Euroscope a way of doing things massively and it's much more realistic. So these these represent the actual physical strips you see controllers holding in the real world except at places like Heathrow they do use something that looks a lot like V-strips. Um, many airfields around the UK still use the old strips but there is a plan long term to change everybody over. As you can imagine these things take a little bit of time. Shuttle 2 Romeo is uh, hasn't called me yet. Speedbird 619 has his clearance and the American and the Cafe are both clear to push and uh, the blue strips are departures and these sort of orangey strips are the arrivals as this is my only arrival I know the arrival sequence is going to be him so I can pick and drop him into the arrival sequence that's one way of moving strips the other way you saw when uh, I gave 619 his clearance to push is the SID trigger. Clicking on the SID, which is what SID trigger means, is the normal way of moving a strip. So if I SID trigger him, he moves to the next place from cleared, which is to push. And if you want to do something unusual um, or special, then you pick and drop the strip, which is usually undoing things or moving people into runway bays. Usefully, this also selects the aircraft in Euroscope if you want to send them text to save uh, finding them and clicking on them in another way. Uh, it's normal to have the Euroscope list closed or at least minimized when you're using v-strips just for a little bit of extra realism adds to the challenge so Heathrow Tower Speedbird 431 we are going offline thank you for your services Speedbird 431 thanks for the visit have a good evening bye bye good evening yourself bye bye break on 87 uh, for taxing facing uh, east for taxing problem American 87 taxi via Bravo and take the next left, first right on Alpha, hold Alpha 3. So Bravo first left, uh, then right on Alpha and Alpha 3 for American 87. So now he's read that back correctly, I can SID trigger him into the taxi bay and update um, the holding point clearance limit I've given to him. So this is laid out roughly in the shape of the airfield. Uh, it takes a little bit in use to. You've also got the push directions on here. So I click Alpha 3 and it puts Alpha 3 in there. Note that any change you make in here also updates the strip in the way that you'd expect in uh, Euroscope, doing the, uh, the slashes for the taxi limits and also the push directions with the stand number and the dot. Um, V-Strips fills in the stand number automatically for you based on the aircraft position. You imagine in the real world um, the controllers would already have an idea of where the aircraft's going to be when they uh, call up. So it's just for a case of checking. So somebody's just contacted me on text. Uh, Speedbird 8634. Um, he says, with you, ready for approach. Unusual. Right, okay, I think... He was on a little bit earlier and was causing problems, so I think he just wants a landing clearance. So we'll uh, we'll give him that. So 
So let's find his strip. There he is. That's not what he's in the voice room as. Heathrow Tower, Cab Pacific, ready to taxi. Runway 27, right. Cathay 2541, taxi via Golf, second right Echo, second right Alpha, hold Alpha 3. Clear to taxi, Golf, second right on Echo, second right on Alpha, hold Alpha 3. Now he's got it right, I'll update the strip. I tend to update the strip only when they've read it back correctly. So 8634 has made contact with me, so I can click here as a reminder that he's made contact. Useful when you've got several people um, on approach that you can continue approach to. And because I've given him clearance to land, then I can pick and drop him into the southern runway. So this means he's got occupancy of the southern runway. It's a good reminder for me uh, not to let anybody cross. Um, the only time you ever have multiple people in the runway base is when... Um, maybe you've got somebody's lined up and somebody else is crossing and things like that or lined up and someone else is departing you can see it knows that uh, Speedbird um, from wherever this is Damascus uh, is going to be Terminal 5 so I'm going to stick him on stand 544 note that that does not do the speed in the way that the old Euroscope uh, way of doing things was um, so you're completely independent, you don't have to worry about upsetting the approach and London controllers. So I've just been contacted with Speedbird1021, he's called me Heathrow Director, he says he's a 763, and gate 533, clearance to Frankfurt. So, 533, he hasn't given me the ATIS, so I can tell him, it's information Oscar, and uh, give him his clearance. Speedbird 8634 is asking for his taxi clearance. Let's just do that. Speedbird 1021 wants it in text even though uh, he wants to, well, wants the uh, text again. I don't really know why, but there we go. I'll give that again. So Speedbird 8634 has his taxi clearance. And now Speedbird 12 wants his taxi, uh, his departure clearance. But I don't have a flight plan for him, so no flight plan. So 8634 is vacated. So the next normal step is to trigger him into the taxi bay and there we go. Okay, American 87 is at the hold, so let's clear him for takeoff. American 87, runway 27 right, clear for takeoff, surface wind 230 degrees, 6 knots. So I've moved him into the uh, north runway bay and then uh, that just means he's been cleared to line up or at least enter the runway and then I click on his departure. Uh, sorry, his destination, and the strip goes green. That's a reminder that he has his takeoff clearance. So let's see. Um, Bbird one zero two one has read back his clearance correctly, so I can uh, give him correct. Uh, and now, and I think the V strips window has got lost. Yeah, somehow. There it is. So, um, I don't know how the uh, window got behind um, B strips there. It's probably something to do with I've got my multiple monitor set up. Speedbird um, 1 2 insists he's filed a flight plan. But uh, I don't see it. So American 87 is uh, rolling. When he gets airborne, I'll SID trigger him into the airborne bay. Um, V-strips does not do that automatically. You uh, you do have to do that yourself. Okay, here's Speedbird 1-2. So let's say uh, he's not give me anything else. So report active type and stand number. Information Oscar. And 
we can edit him just to have a look at his route. Okay, interesting spelling. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to correct that route just for now because I'm trying to do this tutorial ordinarily I would, but uh, it's no fun you listening to me type. So American 87 has just got airborne, so I can SID trigger him into the airborne bay, and you see this little timer starts counting here, and that's really useful for your time or wake separation. So speedway 12 says he's a triple seven two four eight, which uh, looks correct. So I've given him the uh, uh, the information. He hasn't read back the Q and H, so let's give him that again. Uh, everything else is read back. So when he reads this back correctly, um, I'm going to click the uh, the little green tick just to mark that he's got it right. So American 87, I can have a look at who's online, the author online, so I'll hand him off to director. American 87, contact Heathrow director, 119 decimal 725. Bye bye. What nine oh seven two four American eighty seven heavy thing for much today. So I can click QSY to say I've handed him off, and then I can keep the strip for as long as I need this uh, this time counter. So if I've got something like a a debt link, and then Brookman's Park, and another debt link, and I need to keep the first debt link to do the three minutes between the two, I can keep these uh, strips. However, when I'm done with them, SID trigger, and away it goes. Three bits, six one, and we are ready to push right now. Speedbird 619, a push and start approved, face north. Push and start approved, facing north for Speedbird 619, sir. And one thing you'll notice is that this is blue, and this is blue. That means that he's not he's got like, not got the uh, correct squawk set, and also the Q and H is uh, possibly different from when we gave it to him last time. Um, I thought it was 1022, but that's a reminder. But it also looks like the cafe has got uh, the wrong Q&H, so I'll give him the uh, the new Q&H with his takeoff clearance. Cathay 2541 from Alpha 3, runway 27 right, clear for takeoff, surface wind 230 degrees, 6 knots, new Q&H 1022. Clear for takeoff, runway 27 right, Q&H 1022, Cathay Pacific 2541. So now he's read the Q&H back correctly, I can click it and it makes it go black. Ah, now what that actually was um, is V-Strips picks up the Q&H change a little bit sooner than um, Euroscope does, which I should have spotted down here. So what's happened is um, it's, it's telling me he's got the wrong Q&H even though in Euroscope it looks like it's 1022. Um, I'm not going to bother giving him another instruction because he's uh, just starting his takeoff run now. But Speedbird 619 definitely does need his uh, new Q&H. Speedbird 619 and new Q&H 1023. Q&H 1023 for Speedbird 619, sir. One thing uh, V-Strips doesn't do is it doesn't pick up the 80s letter here. Uh, you have to set it yourself. It's just a technical limitation. Okay, it's Peepid 1021. He wants to push back and start. So, yep, he's on Bravo. So, push north. And when he reads it back, I'll move the strip. In the meantime, I could choose the frequency that Cathay is going to go to. Um, and you see that uh, that didn't give me the choice anymore, and it's because uh, Heathrow Director have gone offline, so it just knows it's going to be Unicom. When the London splits are open, it's really, really useful to pre-select them. Um, sometimes the ground controller, if they're really good, will select them for you on the taxi out in V-strips, and uh, it saves you having to look up what's going on. Really useful when it's really busy. Speedway 1021 has given me his uh, pushback, to the north, his readback's correct, so I can SID trigger him and uh, 
enter his push direction. Cathay just got airborne, so we'll see trigger him into the airborne, and that starts the clock. The uh, last point to talk about is crossing and cross highlights. So if you're departing on, say, 27 right, you've got an aircraft on Terminal 4 that's going to need to cross the arrival runway, then the strip gets automatically, because uh, Euroscope knows the configuration, knows where they are, Cathay 2541, no further ATC, minus Unicom 122.8, bye bye. Over to Unicom 122.8 for Cathay Pacific 2541, thanks a lot for all the help tonight. You're welcome, bye bye. So I'm done with him now, I've nobody following him, I don't need to keep the strip so I can sit trigger him, get rid of him. Um, these two arrivals I'll just deal with quickly, so we'll go uh, 518 and 512. So it's Bieber 619, I've artificially given him the, the cross highlight, even though he's uh, on Terminal 5, but just to make the uh, the demonstration. When a strip has got the red highlight, it's a reminder he needs to cross uh, a runway. When he gets moved into the um, holding bays, he'll go into hold south, and then it's a case of pick and drop him onto the south runway, and then when you uh, move him out with the SID trigger, he'll go back into the taxi bay, and you can remove the, the red highlight. But it's a really useful reminder. Um, that this aircraft uh, needs to cross. There's uh, one final thing as well that if you've got an aircraft who uh, was arriving um, you've got a go around button as well so everybody can see that you've had a go around and they just go back into the pending arrivals and the arrival sequence again. So I think that's everything that, need to, uh, that needs to be covered when using V-strips. Any questions please pop them in the comments below. The more people that use V-strips all around the UK, whether that's just to get used to it at a quieter airfield or uh, definitely use it at Heathrow, then the better. Uh, just a better experience all around if uh, all of the um, ADC controllers are using Euroscope. So yep, any comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.